Okay, in this video we're going to look at a solution to question number A2 from the 2018 Putnam exam. So let's look at the statement. So we want to let S1, S2, all the way up to S sub 2 to the n minus 1 be the non-empty subsets of this set of uh, natural numbers 1, 2, all the way up to n. And we want to define a matrix which we'll call MN whose entries are given by 0 if the SI intersect SJ is empty and 1 if it's non-empty, in other words, otherwise. And our goal is to find the determinant of this matrix MN. So maybe the first thing that we'll notice is the following. So we'll make a couple of observations. So first of all, if N equals 1, then 2 to the n minus 1 equals 2 to the 1 minus 1, which is also 1. And there are exactly uh, two subsets of um, 1, and that is the empty set and the set 1 itself. And so since we don't want the empty set, we have S1 equals uh, the singleton 1, which tells us that M1 is the 1 by 1 matrix given by just the number 1, and this obviously gives us the determinant of M1 equals 1. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is make another observation. So let's say this is our first observation. Our second observation is as follows. So it's well known... that there are 2 to the n subsets of the set of natural numbers 1 to n. So that's well known. We're not going to prove that. And so since there are 2 to the n subsets of 1 to n, one of them is the empty set. That means there's 2 to the n minus 1 non-empty subsets. And this is meant to be a list of all of them. Another thing to notice is that it's not saying anything about the ordering of these subsets, which means the determinant of this matrix must be invariant under that ordering. So we don't need to worry about the ordering of this matrix, or sorry, of these subsets subsets as we're building the matrix. Now the next thing we want to notice is that if x is a subset of 1 to n and maybe let's say x is not the empty set, it really falls into three categories. So the first category is x is a subset of 1 to n minus 1. So in other words x does not contain n so x does not contain n. So another category is that x equals x prime union the singleton n, where x prime um, is a subset of 1 to n minus 1 with x prime not equal to the empty set. So these two are going to set up our induction together with the third possibility, which is x equals the singleton n. Okay, great. So since those are the three possibilities for subsets of 1 to n, we can easily get a handle on our subsets of 1 to n in terms of the subsets from 1 to n minus 1, setting up a nice induction. Okay, so I'll clean up the board and then we'll get into the meat of this solution. Okay, so now that we've set up our observations, we're ready to get into the meat of our solution. So as I pointed out, we're going to have an induct inductive process. So we'll start with some subsets, S1 prime, all the way up to S to the 2N minus 1 minus 1 prime. And these are all subsets um, of N minus 1. And I should be saying all non-empty subsets. And then using that third observation we had about the structure of subsets of uh, 1 to n, we can uh, create uh, all the subsets uh, from 1 to n out of these. So uh, let's define S1 equals S1 prime, S2 equals S2 prime, all the way down to S2 uh, to the n 
minus 1 minus 1 equals s2 to the n minus 1 minus 1 prime. So in other words, the first 2 to the n minus 1 minus 1 subsets of 1 to n that are non-empty are just the subsets um, from 1 to n minus 1 that are non-empty. And now we'll jump to the next part. So we'll also let s uh, 2n minus 1, so that would be the next one. So we'll, that, we'll let that be equal to s1 prime union the singleton n. And then we'll let s sub 2n minus 1 plus 1 equal s2 prime un union the singleton n all the way down to s sub 2n minus 2 is going to be equal to s sub 2n minus 1 minus 1 prime union the singleton n. Okay, so if you recall, our subsets from 1 to n had three um, types. They were either already just subsets of 1 to n minus 1. They were non-empty subsets of 1 to n minus 1 union the singleton n. Or finally, they could be just the singleton n. And so we'll do that at the very end. We'll say s uh, sub 2n minus 1 equals just the singleton n. Okay, good. So I'm going to clean up this board and then I'll jump to what the matrix looks like. Okay, so now we're back ready to look at the structure of our matrix Mn. So let's go ahead and define the matrix Mn minus 1 by its entries, which are given by Mij, which is 0 if Si prime intersect Sj is the empty set, and 1 otherwise. So in other words, if it's not the empty set. So now let's look at what that makes Mn, which is similarly defined without the primes. Okay, so now let's notice this first block in the upper left hand side, these S1 through S2n minus 1 minus 1, those are exactly the SI prime matrices. And so what that tells us is that this upper block here is just Mn minus 1. Okay, great. And now let's uh, look at this block down here. So recall that these subsets um, were given by the S prime subsets with the inclusion of the element n. So every subset here has the element n, and every subset down here also has the element n. So what that tells us is that the intersection of any two pairs of subsets here is non-empty. They all contain one. So what that gives us is a matrix with all ones in this block right here. Okay, so now let's look at this um, lower column. So recall that S sub 2n minus 1, that was just the singleton n. So let's put that in there as a reminder. This is only the singleton n. And then none of these subsets contained n at all, so that means this is a column of zeros. Good. And then all of these contained the singleton, is, sorry, contained the element n by our construction. So this is all ones. And then uh, similarly, that thing on the bottom diagonal over there, that is also one because this is the same uh, subset. Great. And then you can argue very easily that this has to be a symmetric matrix. So we get all ones up here and then all zeros up here. Okay, great. So now let's move on to maybe this part right here. So we're looking at the intersection of these, which recall that these were just the S1 prime matrices all the way down to the S2n minus 1 prime matrices. And these were defined by S1 prime union, the singleton n, all the way up. So none of these contain the element n. All of these contain the element n, but, but that's the only way these differ from these subsets up here. So what we have is these subsets in this range intersect with these subsets in this range the same way that these intersect with themselves. So that gives us the matrix Mn minus 1 here, and then similarly in this location. Okay, good.
So now we've got our matrix M in, in terms of a block matrices with our matrix M in minus one. So the next thing I want to do is do some row operations and recall that row operations change the determinant in a certain way. So I'm going to clean up parts of the board, leaving the matrix, and then describe the row operations that are going to happen. Okay, so I've cleaned up everything that we don't need. I have my block matrix for MN in terms of the matrix um, MN minus 1, and now I want to perform some row operations. I should say row and column operations. So the first thing I can do is perform row operations with the last row, and notice that's not going to change anything in, these, in this first block, but what we can do is zero out everything in this block and everything in this block. And we can do that just by doing the following. So we can take row K and subtract row 2 to the n minus 1. Recall that's the last row. And that's going to become our new row K. And we're going to do that for everything in this range. So in other words, K is going to be between 2 to the n minus 1 and 2 to the n minus 2. So recall that was... Uh, the indices for those rows. Okay, and again, what that's going to do is zero out everything in this block and zero out everything in that block. Okay, so uh, let's do that real quick. Okay, so we did our row operations that zeroed out these two blocks, and now we can similarly do column operations, which are going to also not change the determinant. So what we can do is we can take column K and subtract column 2 to the n minus 1. So that would be this column over here, which notice has all zeros and a single 1. And that is going to be our new column K. And this is for K from 2n minus 1 all the way up to 2n minus 2. Great. So that's going to zero out all the parts right here. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now we've got this simpler block matrix that we want to find the determinant of. Notice we've got a bunch of zeros. We've got blocks that are the previous matrix, M sub N minus 1, and then we've got this single 1 down here. Now, since this single 1 is on the diagonal, flanked by zeros on its row and column, that means we can do cofactor expansion to find the determinant of MN in terms of the determinant of this remaining block. What we'll get for that is the following. So we have the determinant of MN equals the determinant of this block matrix MN minus 1, MN minus 1, MN minus 1, uh, 0. So as follows. Okay, good. So now we all, all we need to do is find the determinant of this block matrix. So to reiterate what we just did is we expanded the determinant about that row and that column in order to get this formula. Okay, so I'm gonna clean up the board. I'm gonna bring this up to the top and then we're almost done. Okay, so we left off at this point. We have the determinant of MN is the determinant of this block matrix. So MN minus one, MN minus one, MN minus one, and zero. So the next thing we wanna do is use this fact, our algebra, which is the following. So if we have the determinant of a block upper triangular matrix, so A, B, 0, C, that's going to be equal to the determinant of A times the determinant of C. So I'm not going to prove that. That's a fairly well-known um, fact. But we don't have an upper triangular block matrix, but we could do a bunch of column operations to get ourselves into this form. So what we want to do is switch out every column here with every column here. So we'll switch this one out with this one at the end. We'll switch the one right next to it 
with the one right to the left of that and so on and so forth. So we're going to do all of those column swaps. And you might say, well, how many column swaps do we have there? And we have exactly two to the n minus one minus one. And we know that from the fact that this is a two to the n minus one minus one matrix. Each column swap gives us a minus sign to the determinant. So what that gives us is that this determinant up here is minus one to the two to the n minus one minus one times the determinant of mn minus one mn minus one uh, zero mn minus one. Good, so we have that, but now by this fact from linear algebra, this is exactly equal to minus the determinant of mn minus one, the whole thing squared. Notice this is obviously a minus sign because this is an odd number. So, and then again, we know that the determinant of m1 was one. That makes the determinant of m2 negative one, the determinant of m3 negative one, and in fact, the determinant of all of the rest of these equal to negative one. And so this is true for all n bigger than or equal to two. So if you want to look at the final answer, we have the determinant of M1 equals 1, and then the determinant of Mn equals negative 1, and that's for all N bigger than or equal to 2. And that finishes the solution to this problem.